recent events. I will show the few men's events, sheds light on the perspectives of international figures on them, and give the regular person, wherever they are a platform, to speak their opinion. Today on your say, we'll be tackling the latest developments that took place here in Egypt. Egypt's military chief last week ruled out intervention in the country's politics after the army handed power to President Mohamed Morsi, the first elected president after the January 25th revolution. State media reported the news, adding that General Abdel Fattah Sisi, who is also the defense minister, called for the country divided factions to adopt a formula for an understanding, warning that the alternative could be extremely dangerous. Some of Morsi's critics have called on the army to intervene against the country's first civilian presence after months of unrest. However, General Abdel Fattah Sisi, who was appointed to head the army in August, that the elections were the only option. The official Al Ahram newspaper quoted him as saying on its website that no one should think the solution is through the army and standing in a queue for 10 or 15 minutes in better than destroying the country. The military had ruled Egypt after an uprising that overthrew former President Hosni Mubarak in early 2011, then handed power to Morsi after his election last June. Speaking at a news conference, Interior Minister Mohammed Ibrahim said that security forces had delivered a successful blow against a terror cell that was on its way to carry out terrorist attacks in Egypt. Ibrahim said the police arrested three members of Al-Qaeda linked cell in an alleged transnational plot to bomb a Western embassy and other targets in Egypt. The suspects were arrested with explosives intended to be used to bomb Western Embassy after an investigation showed threats in Pakistan, Iran and Algeria. Ibrahim did not identify which embassy was targeted. However, he said that militants were on the verge of attacking it using a suicide bomber or by detonating a bomb packed with ammonium nitrate, a common fertilizer. The minister added that the suspects were captured with 10 kilos of fertilizer and a computer containing instructions on bomb making. The militants had been in touch with Al-Qaeda leader outside the country, identified as Kurdi Dawood al-Asadi, who is at the head of Al-Qaeda in some of West Asian countries. According to Ibrahim, Asadi had instructed the suspects to coordinate with two alleged militants before their capture last October after a firefight that killed a gunman in a Cairo apartment. <music> Authorities released last week the founder of the April 6th movement, one of the key youth movements behind the 2011 uprising after he was held uh, beforehand. A judicial source said Ahmed Meher of the April 6th movement had been arrested last week at Cairo International Airport upon his arrival from Vienna. Upon his arrival, Meher's passport was confiscated at the airport. He was then transferred to the prosecution for questioning. Meher is accused of incitement to protest outside the Interior Minister's house. Inji Hamdi, a member of the political bureau at the April 6th movement, denounced the arrest. Hailed as heroes as uh, the aftermath of the overthrow of former President Hosni Mubarak, the youth-led group has since splintered into two factions. April 6 had supported President Mohamed Morsi during the June presidential elections, but has since become increasingly vocal in its opposition to the head of state, who they accuse of pursuing Hosni Mubarak's practices and betraying the revolution according to their commitments. A conference titled Practical Applications for the Sukuk, organized by the Ministry of Finance in cooperation with the Islamic Bank for Development, kick-started last week. Minister of Finance Fayyad Abdel Minaim and the Governor of the Bank are attending the conference, which also gathered representatives from 20 ministries and 15 governorates and 30 commercial banks. The conference session was followed by a workshop on practical application of Sukuk and the jurisdiction measures guarding the Sukuk contracts and companies dealing in bonds. Guarantees and legal and technical guidelines necessary for buying Sukuk are also discussed during the workshop as well as the risk management for Sukuk and the revenues. 
Bulgaria's Minister of Finance, Kalin Herisov, says that the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, EBRD, will discuss extending aid to Egypt while it transitions to democracy. The host of the 22nd annual EBRD Board of Governors meeting was held in Istanbul, said that the bank was also assisting Morocco, Jordan, Tunisia and Kosovo in their democratic transitions. The opening session of the two-day conference was attended by Prime Minister Hisham Endil along with Turkish counterpart Recep Tayyip Erdogan and high-level officials from southern and eastern Mediterranean countries in which the EBRD is active, namely Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Jordan and Yemen. The EBRD expected to be intervening and investing up to 2.5 billion US dollars per year in Egypt, Jordan, Morocco and Tunisia by the year 2015. The Ministry of Investment announced an end to the month-long dispute between Oraskom Construction Industries and the tax authorities. In a statement, the ministry said the two sides had agreed to settle the dispute with a repayment of 7.2 billion Egyptian pounds instead of 14 billion Egyptian pounds. The repayment plan was also agreed upon. For his part, Nasser Tawilis contacted Minister of Investment Yahya Hamid, in which he praised the efforts exerted to end the dispute. The ministry went on to assert their full support for the Egyptian economy in the coming period. Tawiris also requested a meeting with the ministry by the end of May to review his company's investment plan in Egypt. The European Union and Egypt celebrated the 2012 EU-Egypt Year of Science and Innovation, which is an initiative started by the Ministry of Scientific Research in 2000 to 2017. More details with Nada Rabia. The Ministry of Scientific Research, in cooperation with the European Union, launched the closing ceremony of the international conference entitled The Current Situation and the Future Vision of the Means of Cooperation in the Fields of Science and Technology between Egypt and the EU. We think uh, science uh, and technology is extremely important uh, in the partnership between Italy and Egypt. I think it's one of the strategic sectors. And uh, indeed, uh, we have uh, invested a lot. So for instance, in 2009, uh, we organized the Italian-Egyptian Year of Science, which I think was uh, very successful in uh, bringing uh, scientists together. And you can see this in the number of uh, FP7 projects uh, where uh, Italian and uh, Egyptian uh, researchers are together. Even here around the poster session, you will find uh, a lot of that. Uh, we believe uh, uh, science is a value as science diplomacy, especially in this time of uh, transition in Egypt, uh, I think uh, science uh, can play a very important role to bring the communities together. And this is what we are trying to encourage uh, as strongly as possible. Moreover, some exhibitors display their projects like Tempus, which is an EU program that supports the modernization of higher education in the partner countries of the Western Balkans, Eastern Europe and Central Asia, North Africa and the Middle East. Uh, now we have an FP7 project called Ramses project. Actually, the word Ramses is, uh, becomes from the first uh, word of several sentences uh, as reinforcement of adult stem cell research and networking. We have a network between Germany, Romania and Egypt. It is a consortium between these three countries to propagate the work of on adult stem cells and their use in uh, regenerative medicine or in medicine. A number of Egyptian national projects were presented in the event and they were boosted and encouraged by a number of international organizations to enhance scientific research in Egypt. We're an eight-year project uh, funded by the European Union and the Egyptian government. Um, we're worth 66 million euros. We are trying to reform the entire technical and vocational education and training system in Egypt. We, over the past eight years, um, we have done quite a lot of work with the private sector, bringing them on board to try and change the way that we do vocational education and training. And um, we feel like we are making a difference. We're piloting change. And we hope that the Egyptian government, um, together with all the other stakeholders that we're tr trying to reach, will uh, arrive at a reform policy and agree to a reform policy that will change the way that we do technical education. It's a very important area in Egypt that needs to be addressed. So. 
projects aim at facing mutual regional challenges in the fields of energy, environment, agriculture, communication, health, economy, climate change, and social research. Nada Rabia, for Nile International. Cairo Climate Talks is a series of monthly events meant to provide a platform to exchange experience, raise awareness, and foster cooperation between policymakers, the business community, and the scientific community, as well as civil society. It is held in cooperation between the German Embassy in Cairo, the Egyptian Ministry of State for Environmental Affairs, as well as a number of concerned agencies from both sides. <laughs> Cairo Opera House held a new concert. The star of the concert was the young singer Reem Kamel. Basma Taha attended the concert and filed in the following report. Opera House, headed by Dr. Ines Abdeldaim, held a new concert for the Arab musical troupe, headed by Maestro Selim Sahab. The star of the concert was the young singer Reem Kamel. The concert featured a number of classical, romantic, and old songs that go back to the golden age of art. Today's concert is in uh, two parts. The first part is uh, with the singer uh, Reem Kamal, and the second part is with the great uh, singer uh, Ali Al Haggar with his uh, band. Uh, the first uh, part of the concert uh, with Reem Kamal uh, is composed from uh, uh, songs from Arabic classical uh, musical heritage. Uh, uh, some uh, songs uh, of uh, the greatest uh, or the the great uh, singers Asmahan, uh, Popuri, Popuri of three or four songs.